close air support is a vital component of nearly all modern military operations. Here we look at how close air support has developed since World War II and some of the aircraft that are used to fulfill this tactical role. At the outset of World War II, American air strategy was focused on long-range strategic bombing. While the development of effective close air support was given a very low priority. However, when U.S. forces launched their first ground campaign against the Germans in North Africa, the shortcomings of this operational doctrine started to become apparent. During the Battle of Kazarian Pass, German Field Marshal Erwin Rommel attacked the inexperienced American forces with devastating effect, destroying more than 100 tanks and causing approximately 6,500 U.S. casualties in just five days of battle. Although Allied forces were eventually able to push back the German advance, the quick losses suffered at Kasserine Pass made it clear that better coordination between air and ground assets was necessary. As a result, when U.S. troops began their offensive against Fortress Europe, the use of close air support was given a much higher priority. One of the aircraft pressed into the close air support role early on was the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt. Capable of carrying both bombs and rockets, and armed with eight 50 caliber machine guns, the P-47 was rugged enough to survive ground fire, yet nimble enough to effectively engage and defeat the enemy. Used until the end of the war, P-47s worked closely with American ground units to destroy enemy strongholds and key targets, like heavy vehicles, transportation hubs, and strategically important buildings. In fact, the close air support provided by the P-47s with the 14th Tactical Air Command is credited as being a key factor in allowing Patton's 3rd Army to rapidly advance across Europe on the road to Berlin. During the Vietnam War, a major step in the evolution of close air support occurred due to the mass mobilization of rotary wing aircraft. Since helicopters move slower and have the ability to hover over a target area, they provide a greater battlefield presence than most fixed wing aircraft. In late 1967, dedicated helicopter gunships like the Bell AH-1 Cobra were introduced to combat. Armed with a combination of multi-barrel miniguns, 40mm grenade launchers, 70mm rockets, and 20mm cannon pods, the Cobra revolutionized close air support by delivering effective firepower as close as 100 to 200 meters away from friendly troops. By the end of the Vietnam War, nearly 1,100 Cobras have been used in combat, racking up a combined total of more than 1 million hours of operational flight time. Today, close air support is an intrinsic part of ground combat and is provided by a variety of rotary and fixed wing aircraft, like the Republic Fairchild A-10 Thunderbolt II, the Boeing AH-64 Apache, the F-A-18F Super Hornet, the Bell AH-1 Super Cobra, and the McDonnell Douglas AV-8B Harrier II. So what do you think will be the next evolution in close air support development? Will manned aircraft continue to fill the role? Or do you think drones will start taking over some close air support responsibilities? Push your comments and opinions below.